Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian. This is the channel Ian the Reader. Welcome or welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today, I have a long overdue reading update wrap up. That's what it's called. I almost forgot what it was called. So yeah, this is my March and April wrap up. And spoiler alert, I have like 30 books to discuss. So we're gonna keep it short and sweet. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on my thoughts on all of these. So if you have questions, ask. That's all I can say about that. Yeah, I don't know why I'm being so weird, guys. I'm sorry. It's been a while since I filmed like a regular video. I just posted a reading vlog of me reading the Final Dark Tower book, so that's up. But I haven't just like sat down and videoed myself recording a wrap up in a couple months. So we're just gonna carry on as usual. Before I jump into what I read in the last couple of months, so please let me know what your favorite book was of the last couple of months, or even your favorite book of the year so far, because I've had like some five star reads this year, but very, very few like new favorites. And I'm in the mood right now where I could really use like a new favorite to obsess over. So let me know what you got. Okay, so like I said, this is going to be for March and April. So let's go ahead and talk about my March wrap up. I read 10 books in March. So the first of those was The Angel's Game by Carlos Ruiz Safan. I really was excited about reading this book, but I was also very nervous because The Shadow of the Wind, I almost said The Shadow Game. What's The Shadow Game? I don't know what that is, but The Shadow of the Wind by this author is one of my all-time favorite novels ever. Yeah, like top 10, like top five, to be honest. I love The Shadow of the Wind so, so much. And so it's one of those series that I wasn't sure if I was ever going to continue because The Shadow of the Wind works so perfectly as a standalone that I wasn't sure I wanted to jeopardize my feelings about it by reading the continuation. Now, that aside, this book very much kind of operates on that same level of it could be a standalone. You could even start with this book. I would almost recommend it because it is in a way a prequel to The Shadow of the Gods takes place beforehand, follows the grandparents of one of the main characters of The Shadow of the Wind. So you could start here. And I think that's the design of the series is that you can really enter into the series at any point. There's like four or five novels. No, it's four novels and then a collection of short stories. You can start anywhere. Most people start with The Shadow of the Wind because it's the most popular and it was the first one, but you could also start with The Angel's Game. So do whatever you want. That aside, I really enjoyed this book. I did not enjoy it as much as The Shadow of the Wind, but it didn't hurt my love of The Shadow of the Wind. If anything, I appreciate what he did in that book more now that I've read The Angel's Game because his character work was absolutely phenomenal. He did some incredible things and his writing is so immaculate. And it's incredible that these books are translated from Spanish because I have a hard time imagining that this is not the language it is written, was written in because every word feels like so perfect. I think it's set in Barcelona, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it just has this huge mystery around it. The main character is a writer um, and he makes this deal with someone that has some serious ramifications. And uh, I liked it. I liked the mystery. I liked the romantic elements. I liked the writing a lot. I just didn't really connect with the characters as much. And I thought that the pacing was a little bit off in this one. So overall, I give it like a four star if I had to rate it. Um, so not a new favorite, but it still was really good. And I'm glad that I read it. Then I followed it up by finishing off the most recent Dungeon Crawler Carl book. And it feels so weird to me talking about this because I feel like I finished this ages ago, but maybe that's just me like missing it so much that it feels like so long since I've gotten to enjoy a Dungeon Crawler Carl book, but it's only been like two months. But yeah, this one is called The Eye of the Bedlam Bride. It is book six, the most recently published book in the Dungeon Crawler Carl series. It is not finished, thank God, but this is the most recent one. And to be honest, this is probably my favorite one yet. Uh, I really love the first Dungeon Crawler Carl book a lot. It nailed the humor as well as the adventure elements really nicely. And I felt like the second and third books in particular kind of lost a little bit of the humor. Still really funny compared to like other books, but the first book was just so hilarious and took me by surprise so much that the second and third book were just, I guess the impact of what this book is had kind of dulled a little bit. Uh, we kind of ramped up a little bit in book four and then book five was amazing. And book six, The Eye of the Bedlam Bride was probably the best one yet because I feel like it did everything that the rest of the series does well, better. Um, it just, the humor was spot on, the adventure was spot on, the twists were spot on, the level was spot on. Um, these are so much fun. I've talked about the series so much on this channel and so many other people have as well, but if you're looking for an audiobook that will just knock you off your feet, be so engaging, so fun, hilarious, original, ridiculous, check out Dungeon Crawler Carl, so good. 
Then I read The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. This is a very short nonfiction book that is written by like a 18th century monk. Um, so take that as you will. Um, but I really enjoyed this book. It was very short. It had a lot of um, impactful thoughts that I've really pondered over the last couple of months on um, just how useless things can be. Like, it, it, you know, it's a monk, so he has a very um, unique and singular perspective on things, but he wrote a lot about just not caring so much about useless things, things that don't add value. Um, and I've really carried that with me a lot and I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, and I'm also a Christian and this was a really great book, just full of encouragement and some deep thought that has stuck with me and helped me a lot um, over the past couple of months craziness. So very grateful for this book. Um, I don't really rate nonfiction, but if I was to rate this, I'd say like four and a half stars because some of it is very much like, okay, dude, you're a monk. Um, I can't be like you, but at the same time, I can very much glean some wisdom from this book and I'm grateful that I read it. Switching it up completely, I read The Dark Tower 7 by Stephen King and this book was incredible. This is one of the only like new favorites that I have for the year thus far. I cannot believe I'm done with the series mind blown. Um, but if you want to hear all my spoiler thoughts, if you've read The Dark Tower, you can check out my reading vlog. I will link it down below where I just go into all of my spoilery thoughts, go through my whole experience of reading it, lots of emotions. Very, very good. I'll be making a uh, why you should read The Dark Tower or like should you read The Dark Tower series video very soon in which I'll do like a ranking of the books and uh, give an argument for why you should read it and also give a like recommended reading order because there are so many Stephen King books that have very significant ties to the Dark Tower series that I feel like are essential to really get the full picture. So yeah, loved it though. The Dark Tower 7, absolutely incredible. Highly recommend. Then I read Of Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill. This is a self-published fantasy book that has gotten like quite a bit of buzz to be honest. I feel like this is one of the most like beloved epic fantasy at the very least. I see this all over Instagram and YouTube. So this is quite buzzy when it comes to self-published fiction. And I am currently buddy reading this series with Read by Kyle, Jordan Reads, and Tall Guy Reads. I think those are their channel names because I don't see a whole lot of videos from them. So I forget what their actual usernames are, but I'm very excited that uh, both Kyle and Jordan have posted YouTube videos recently and they've been doing live streams and stuff. So hopefully we can get Alex to jump back into, that'd be super cool. Um, but until that point, yeah, they're, they're great. Kyle, Jordan, Alex, I'll link them down below. If you haven't followed them already, please do. Um, but yeah, we're reading the series of Blood and Fire's the first book and it was fine. It is like the most cookie cutter epic fantasy, like Dragon Rider fantasy of all time. Um, and I hope that Ryan Cahill really did that so he could like blow our minds with how crazy he's gonna get in the second and third book. I'm currently reading the second book about halfway through and it's better, I'll give it that. My mind is not yet blown though and I want my mind to explode. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, but yeah, A Blood and Fire was fine. Speaking of fine, I read Steel Heart by Brandon Sanderson. This is a series that I am buddy reading with my family book club this year, and it was fine. Uh, maybe a little bit better than fine. It's like YA Brandon Sanderson, so take that as you will. Uh, but it's like superhero fantasy or like superhero sci-fi, uh, but kind of in a dystopian sort of world where superheroes are not really heroes at all. They are mostly villains. Um, and so it, it raised some interesting questions and it was fun. Um, I can't say that I absolutely loved it and I've heard that the series kind of goes downhill from here, but hopefully that's not true and I end up enjoying it. So I will be reading book two, uh, which is called, nope, I don't remember. I don't remember what it's called. I guess I could put it here, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, yeah, it's, I'll be reading it soon and hopefully I enjoy it. So anticipate some thoughts from me on that. Let me know if you like the series though. Maybe the negative opinions I've heard are just crazy and the minority, but I don't think so. So see how it goes. Next up, I read The Paper Menagerie by Ken Liu. This was the actual like group read for my family's book club. So we do one book a quarter typically together. Um, and that's what we all we've done in years past. But this year we're doing like one standalone for every quarter and then we're reading a, a whole series throughout the year together as well. So The Paper Menagerie was our quarter one group read. And man, I really enjoyed this collection. I don't think that there's a bad story in it. I don't think I was as blown away as I had hoped to be because a lot of people consider this to not only be like their favorite short story collection, but to be Ken Liu's best work. Um, and I've read The Dandelion Dynasty and personally, I did enjoy that more. Um, maybe it's just the type of reader I am, but typically I really enjoy short story collections. So I will say there were probably like three or four 
stories in this collection that absolutely blew me away. Five stars, incredible. Just beautiful writing, amazing ideas, perfectly executed, um, masterful writing. Uh, the rest of it was really good, but it didn't quite knock me off my feet the way that I wanted it to. So take that as you will. Like this is definitely a recommendation. You should totally read this if you like uh, really well executed short stories that carry deep thought and ideas and um, conversations within them. Told through like kind of the lens of sci-fi oftentimes. There was some fantasy in there as well, but most of these stories were science fiction. Um, and yeah, if you like that kind of thing, totally pick this up. You'll probably love it more than I did. I think my expectations were just like through the roof with this one. So I really enjoyed it, but not a new favorite exactly. I also finished one more short story collection. The final book that I finished in the month of March was The Bizarre Bad Dreams by Stephen King. This was a book that I was buddy reading with uh, Jake uh, over at the Bookish Drummer, or really it's on his Discord. He and Stacy have the Bookish Drummer Discord and they do short story read-alongs. And this was their most recent Stephen King short story collection they were going through. And I finally decided to participate. And I read it week by week with them to a point. But once it came time for April, which was the Battle of the Bands readathon, there was no way I was gonna be able to continue with that like one story a week. So I just went ahead and finished it in March and I actually really enjoyed it. I know this isn't like one of his most popular short story collections, but I had a good time with it. There are definitely some stories in here that are not great. Um, it's not like Ken Liu in that like every single story is at least good. Um, some of them are not. I did not have a good time with some of these. I thought some of them were kind of dumb. Some of them just were not well executed. Uh, but at the same time, there were some bangers in here. So I will say it is worth the read um, just due to the fact that some of these are like excellent stories. So I had a good time with this and I'll definitely be reading more of King's short fiction in the very near future. So that takes us through March. Moving on to April, this was the Battle of the Bands 3 readathon, which was an absolute blast. I love these readathons that Jake and Stacy put together over on the Book of Drummer Discord. They are like my favorite thing to do. Uh, so we do have another round coming up very soon in July. So be on the lookout for both the announcement video for that from Jake and Stacy. I'll share it on my community page and then also my uh, TBR for that when the time comes. So very excited for that in July. But for April, I did finish all 20 books to complete the readathon. My team did not win, but we uh, had a lot of heart. So I'll take it. Uh, for April though, I did finish 20 books and let's talk about those. First up, and actually we're gonna go ahead and lump in this whole series because I did read uh, three books in the Kate Daniels series by Alona Andrews. So what I did read was book 5.5, which is Gunmetal Magic, book six, which is Magic Rises, and book seven, which is Magic Breaks. If you ask me to name in order the Kate Daniels books, I would I would die because it's, they're so random. Like the first book is called Magic Bites. The second one is called Magic Burns, maybe. It's just like magic blank. It has nothing to do with the plot. I am very curious to find out how they pick the names for books. Like, do they just like open a book to a random page, pick a word and see if it goes with magic and that's the decision-making process? I wouldn't be that surprised. But anyway, these are Ultimate Popcorn. So much fun, urban fantasy series um, with kind of some interesting dynamics. I've talked about this series a lot. And this is another one that I will be doing like a why you should read or like should you read the Kate Daniel series uh, video at some point. I am nearly done. I'm currently reading book nine um, and there are 10 main books in the series. So I'm going to go ahead and finish those off in May. Uh, but yeah, I read three of these for the month. Varied enjoyment. Um, Gunmetal Magic is a 0.5 book in that it's a full novel, but it follows a different character who's normally like a side character in the series. And I just didn't care about her story as much. So didn't enjoy that. But uh, the, uh, what is it? Sixth and seventh books of the Kate Daniels series were fantastic. So much fun, great series. Be on the lookout for my Kate Daniels video at some point in your future. Moving on to another series I read, I read the entire Danny Ryan trilogy by uh, Don Winslow in the month of May, which consists of City on Fire, City of Dreams, and City in Ruin. This was a last minute edition, was not on my TBR, but the most recent one, City in Ruins, did come out in the month of April. So I just decided to pick it up on a whim and uh, I had a good time with it. I do have some thoughts on it. I'm going to save them because I will be making a series review of that sometime in the next week or so. Um, but this was my first, uh, Don Winslow to read and I've been wanting to read his books for a long time. I own The Power of the Dog and its two sequels so he's definitely an author that I've had on my radar for some time and I'm glad that I finally read his books but I do have some thoughts on the Danny Ryan trilogy. Overall I enjoyed it but I'll save the rest of my thoughts for a video at a later time. 
Another series that I read multiple books in is the Indian Lake Trilogy, I think, by Stephen Graham Jones. I had originally planned to read the whole trilogy, but I got a little burnt out on it. It's just a lot. Uh, it's kind of a, a strange read, but I did enjoy the first two books that I read, those being uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw and Don't Fear the Reaper. I enjoyed My Heart is a Chainsaw a bit more. I'd say I'd give that a four stars, and I give Don't Fear the Reaper maybe like a 3.25 if I had to rate them. Um, these are really fun horror books that kind of pay homage to a lot of different horror movies and books and tropes um, with a really engaging protagonist, which really was like the selling point for me. Jade Daniels is a fantastic horror protagonist, which is why I enjoyed My Heart is a Chainsaw more because she is the main character of the second book as well, really the whole trilogy, but she is less of a focus in that one. More perspectives are kind of added in and that just didn't work for me as well. So overall, I enjoyed the first book, enjoyed the second one a little bit less and I will read Don't Fear, Don't Fear the Reaper? No, that's the second book. What is it? The Angel of Indian Lake. I actually started it and set it aside in the month. So I will be coming back to this at some point. But for now, these were pretty good. Definitely good if you enjoy horror. I do recommend them. And I think the Goodreads average score for uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw is way too low. It's like a 3.6 or something. No, it's a 3.55. Yeah, that's crazy. Because uh, I honestly thought it was amazing. And if you enjoy horror and you're picking up that book, I feel like you would most likely enjoy it. So that's kind of surprising to me. But uh, yeah, there you have it. I enjoy these. I'll finish them at some point. I also read the Thrill, Chill, Kill, I think that is called, uh, book club read for the Book of Sharma Discord. Man, I am on that Discord a lot now that I think about it. But uh, yeah, I read the April pick for that, which was Dark Ride by Ian Rob Wright. And uh, I had never even heard of this author or this book until the readathon started and it was short. And so I was like, sure, I'll go ahead and read this. And it was fun. And this author has like a ton of horror books. So I'll definitely be reading more from him. This is set in like a haunted theme park, which cool. Um, but it was definitely a bit out there and like jumped the shark a bit, but it was a good time. And that's ultimately what I wanted it to be. So I had a blast with it and I'll definitely be reading more. I also started the series Infinity's End, I think it's called. The first book is called Caspian's Fortune. It's by Eric Warren. This is a sci-fi series and the books are like really short. So I did enjoy that. Um, I definitely thought that the world building was pretty good and the plot was pretty well paced, especially with it being a short book. It kept my attention um, and I felt pretty good about some of the characters. Ultimately, I didn't connect with them as much as I wanted to. So I'm hoping that the author really builds on those characters and the relationships in the future books. I think he will. It's a completed series. and I think it has nine books. So I'll definitely be reading more of these and hopefully enjoying them. I mean, they're short. They're going to be easy to read. And uh, one of my really good friends recommends these and says they're, they're amazing. So I think I'll enjoy. Um, the first book was pretty good. I am excited to read more though, and I definitely will very soon. I also read the first books in the Elder Empire series is I think that's the right way of saying that by Will White those books are of sea and shadow and of shadow and sea they are two conjoined trilogies that should kind of be read in tandem and they follow two different characters in the same timeline um, so the events kind of coincide with each other and I thought that this was really interesting I'm buddy reading these two trilogies with my brothers we're reading one from each a month um, and I enjoyed it. These are by Will White. He wrote the Cradle series, which I absolutely love. Another series I buddy read with my brothers. Um, I don't think any of the, us enjoyed these as much as the Cradle books, which I don't think any of us anticipated to, but uh, it's fun. Like it's a cool idea um, and it's got some interesting magic to it. There's like a lot of like piratey stuff in it, which is kind of cool um, and assassins. So if you're into that stuff, totally check these out. They're a good time. They're pretty easy to get into. I will say the world building could have been done a little bit better because there were just so many different like unique terms and things like that, that it was kind of hard to catch on to, especially at the pace at which the book was, you know, moving through, but I still had a good time with it. And if you like Will White, you should totally give the series a try. Then I read Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, which was advertised as a standalone for a long time. And I later discovered it is the third book in the Part of Your World series by Abby Jimenez, which I've read Part of Your World. I have not read the second book, Yours Truly. So there were some spoilers for that book in this, which I was a little annoyed at, but at the same time, like, how much can you really spoil a romance book, if that makes sense? You know, it's about a couple getting together over the course of a book. So, I mean, it's not that much of a spoiler to find out that they got together. But uh, yeah, it takes place in the same world as part of your world and yours truly. I had a lot of fun with this. I'm really enjoying like the occasional contemporary romance right now. I feel like it is the exact kind of just like easy light, non-committal kind of book that I need to get into because I'm reading so many series right now that have world building and huge character arcs and stuff like that. And just to read a romance every once in a while and get to kind of like shut my brain off 
it's great. So I enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun. I like Abby Jimenez as far as like contemporary romance authors go. She's the one I kind of gravitate towards the most. And uh, it was a good time. It was a good time. Then I read What the Night Knows by Dean Koontz. This is my second Dean Koontz novel. And overall, I enjoyed it. Not as much as Phantoms, which was the first one that I read, but I did have a good time. This is light on the horror, more heavy on like kind of the supernatural mystery elements. There are supernatural things going on. Um, but overall, I didn't like love this as much as I wanted to, but it was very engaging. So it was not hard to get through by any means. Um, and overall, I enjoyed it, but uh, yeah. I don't know if uh, I would read a second book if there was a second book out, which I think there's like a prequel novella, but eh, I don't really want to read it. Then we have The Traveling Cat Chronicles, which is my quarter two group read for my family's book club. Uh, I don't have too many thoughts on this. It's very easy to read, I'll say that. It follows a cat, the main character's a cat, but really that's just like a narrative uh, tool that the author uses to tell the story of its owner. Basically, um, the main or the owner of the cat is needing to rehome the main character cat for some reason. And so he's traveling to visit different friends and family to see if they can take his cat. And it tells the story of that man's relationships with all of these people through the lens of this cat hearing about it and blah, 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 blah. So it was fun, kind of emotional. It was good. I didn't love it, but it was a good time. Easy to read. Speaking of easy to read, I read Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry, the prequel to Legends and Lattes, and I wasn't crazy about it. It's like the most meh I feel on a book, to be honest. Like I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, but I think with how much I enjoy Legends and Lattes, I did think I was going to enjoy this more. It was fine. Like, I don't know. It's like everything about Legends and Lattes that I enjoyed, it kind of had, but slightly twisted to be a little bit different. So it's a different book and not quite as endearing. So it was good, not great. Also reread The Gunslinger by Stephen King because it fit one of the prompts and I wanted to see if my perspective on it changed after finishing the Dark Tower series and it totally did. This book is great. I don't think for first time readers it's very welcoming but for somebody who has finished the series it is wild. The returns are endless. So yeah I enjoyed The Gunslinger the most that I ever have reading it this time. We're zooming through here because I have somewhere to be <laughs> but next up we have Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee. I love the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee so I was excited to read something different by her and this is pretty short. It was only like 155 pages and it was fine. This is another one that I thought was okay. I thought the world building was great for this. Um, you are kind of in this desolate environment where there are these riders of, I don't want to say they're phoenixes, there's something like that though. They're these big birds and um, it's just like a ruthless environment they live in and so they're are trying to survive and the main character rides one of these birds and she goes off to try to kill all of these monsters that are terrorizing the land um and it was entertaining like i said i didn't connect with it too much the characters i thought were okay uh but overall the story was fun and i like the world building so go fonda lee four more to go oh no not four more to go two more to go here we are uh i read the screw tape letters by c.s lewis this was a book that i wanted to read for a long time c.s lewis of course is the author of the chronicles of narnia and i've read most of those i actually need to go back and finish the seventh book but i I feel like I should reread the rest of them to do that. But that aside, uh, The Screw Tape Letters is one that has been on my radar for a long time. And it's very interesting. It's kind of brilliant, to be honest, uh, because it's like sort of fiction in that it is a demon writing to his like demon mentee about how he is trying to like corrupt this Christian person um, and like win their soul back for the devil. Um, and it's cool because it has that really interesting narrative structure that is entertaining and wild. Uh, but it also shares a lot of thoughts and reflections on the Christian life and struggles and things like that. So it is almost like a nonfiction disguised as fiction. Um, it's brilliant. I really do think it's brilliant. So I'm really glad that I read this. Um, I highly recommend it if that's something you're into. And uh, yeah, glad I finally read it. And lastly, we have One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid. That's right, right? One True Loves, Taylor Jenkins Reid. Yes. Uh, this is one that I read last minute because it fit a prompt uh, for the readathon and it was fine. I've read two other Taylor Jenkins Reid books, those being Daisy Jones and the Six and Malibu Rising, and I enjoyed both of those quite a bit more than One True Loves. Uh, this has a very compelling concept in that a woman who is married uh, for a couple of years, her husband disappears and is presumed dead. And like five years later, she moves on and ends up getting engaged. 
and then her husband resurfaces and is alive and has been trying to get back to her this whole time. So she has this big decision to make of these two men that she loves, has this history with, and what the heck is she going to do? Um, and the question at the heart of this was very compelling. The execution itself felt a little bit smaller in some ways than I thought it would be. Um, it just felt a little bit rushed, to be honest. And uh, ultimately, by the end of it, I was like, okay, that was it. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's how I feel about it. It was fine. If you enjoyed it, I'm really happy for you. For me, it was average. Yeah. And that's it. Those are the 30 books that I read in March and April. Let me know if you've read any of these and if you enjoyed any of them. I would love to hear from you guys on these. My favorite was definitely The Dark Tower 7. Uh, other than that, I really enjoyed, obviously, Dungeon Crawler Carl, uh, The Screwtape Letters, uh, and a handful of others. Yeah, I can't think of them right now because that was a lot of books. So yeah, let me know what you enjoyed. If you have any comments, questions, concerns about my thoughts on these books, let me know. Let's talk about it. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next video. Bye! Thank you.